three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and it's time for the In and Out Weekly Comics Pull List. It's episode 25, June 12th. Joining me, as always, is Stan the Man. How you doing, Stan? I got my iPad out here, and uh, oh, Stan, you got a drink. Man, I'm thirsty. Ah, man, thanks. And uh, got my comics right here. Look at that. Spoiler. That's a big week. Look at that. Whew. Um, so let's get on with the show. First thing we have today, as always, we got to start off with the Marvel number ones. It's a slow week for Marvel. They've only got two number ones. What's going on over there at the House of No Ideas? Well, as always, every single week, there's a new Star Wars book. There's been one week to my tally, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure one week this year, remember this is 25th week of the year, 25 weeks, there's only been one week this year where there has not been a Star Wars number one. That means in 2019 alone, there are 24 at least, because there might have been multiple number ones, there's at least 24 number one Star Wars books. <laughs> Isn't that retarded? This is, the most, this is so stupid. It's so... And all of these, they just keep, they don't do a series. They could have just had Star Wars Age of Rebellion and been like this sort of like maxi series, you know, do it like for the whole year, you know. That's what I would have done, like Year of Rebellion. Done like a 12-issue series every year, have a Darth Vader, and you know. But, but see, that would be, that would be comics with integrity. Comics that aren't trying to prey on the fans and the, the local stores. This, by having the number ones, gets you know your money out of your pocket exploits you get and how many freaking darth vader comics do we need by the way right do you want to ruin this darth vader is one of the greatest villain characters of all time and you're just going to ruin him by oversaturating and just barfing out darth vader shit left and right the other book that they have is um it's actually a number one i picked up so this marks now the third marvel comic that I've picked up as a number one, excuse me, as a number one this year. Um, and only the second of a hard copy. So I got, um, the first one was Life Story, Spider-Man Life Story, which I've done reviews on every issue. Fan-freaking-tastic. It's probably one of the best things Marvel's done in years, if not decades. Um... Then I picked up digital copies of Ed Piscor's X-Men Grand Design. So that I have digitally. Um, and then this will be the second. I've been reading the Venom stuff uh, from Donnie Cates, who writes this. And I'm in love. Well, I don't want to get hyperbolic here. Hey, see, Bats, I use it in a sentence. Um, I don't want to be hyperbolic about that. I really like the Venom. And I really, I mean, what they're doing, it's got really good art, fantastic art, and really good writing. And coming from the low bar that Marvel is, it's, it's fantastic. This is a book that would have held its own in the 90s. Um, so that's saying something. That's kind of my bar. If it's like, would this book have survived in the 90s? If yes, then worthy book. If no, should not be in print. That's sort of my way of thinking. So... I'm not even really a... I love Venom as a villain character. I think he's the, the best Spider-Man villain. Um, I had a discussion with Bats last night about why that is. I'm not going to go into it here. But be that as it may, Donny Cates has converted me into believing that Venom is worthy of having his own book, where I believed before that not to be the case. Silver Surfer, however, is one of my favorite all-time superhero characters He's never gotten enough love at Marvel. Uh, I think the only time Silver Surfer's ever been used properly is outside of his own books. He's amazing. Like, I love him in Fantastic Four. He was amazing in Infinity Gauntlet. In other people's books, he gets treated amazing. Then they give him his own book, and it's just like this bland, boring, no one knows how to do him right. So I'm like, oh, maybe Donnie Cates will do him right. Maybe. So I picked up number one. Okay. Next thing. Um... The news. This is kind of my like comp like topic section. This reminds me of my memory is so bad. If I don't write it down, uh, I'll blank right over it. Um, comics YouTubers. I am trying to find 
people that do videos like me that talk about comics. I have a lot of um, friends and peers or whatever that do YouTube and uh, they do really good stuff, but they don't do the kind of videos that I'm looking for. Um, I'm gonna use uh, my, my friend Wes who does Thinking Critical. His videos are fantastic, um, but he does a lot of like industry commentary and things like that, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not criticizing any of these type of videos at all. I'm, I'm, what I'm just saying though is he doesn't do, and actually he does more than most, uh, where he just talks about comics. Um, then there's like Sergeant Bats. Sergeant Bats is closer to me. He like will flop down a comic, talk about the comic, why he loves the comic, why he hates the comic, whatever, and just talking comics. Um, a good example also is uh, our boy Zach, Diversity in Comics, uh, stupid new name, Comics Matter. What he does, although Zach's, I think, not failing, but he's kind of losing my interest because he's he's not focused on the comics like he used to be. Um, anyways, my point is, there's a lot of great people out there. Uh, shout out Tristan at Nerd at Snooze Stand. Um, I like to call it Nerd Shack, but if, if I do that, you won't find it. Uh, you'll find it because everyone knows who she is. She does great videos too. She does like more gaming stuff, movie stuff, more industry commentary. There's lots of people that do that stuff that I can find. I have no need for content for that, right? Like, I, I got plenty of people I know that do videos that I subscribe to. What I want is people that are doing kind of what I'm doing, um, like Bats, uh, Comic Boom. He's a good YouTuber. Uh, but I, I feel like I only have just a couple to turn to. And if they're not putting out content, I'm looking at you, Bats. I'm looking at you. Stan is looking at you. Put out content. Um, this is just me being uh, entitled and just wanting more videos to watch. These videos that I make, I don't make them because I think I'm some awesome YouTuber. I make them because this is the kind of stuff I want to see. So. I want to just engage in the conversation. So if you know other people out there that maybe I don't, they think, hey, yeah, you may like this guy, Ash. Go shout out if it's your channel or if it's someone else or whatever, just tell me down below. Um, and then finally, uh, Discord. So I got my iPad up. I've talked about my Discord channel. I leave it the, the link in the description for people to join uh, for friends of this channel. And Discord works like so. You. You can have it as an app on Apple or your Android phone. It also works on PC. I mostly use it on PC, but uh, here's what the interface looks like on iPad. Um, you can swipe side to side. Uh, if you're on the phone, it saves space by kind of closing these side panels. So if you just want to see the side panels, you open them up and you have a bunch of on this side, you have servers, right? So my server has just my little icon there just as a placeholder. That's not a permanent thing. I'm trying to find a better icon, but I'm not a graphic designer. If anyone's an artist and wants to design it, because you'll notice the name of the server is Comic Talk. I'm not trying to have it to be the Ash on Comics server. Um, I'm trying to partner with other people. I'd like to get other YouTubers that do what I do and have like a central location, like a town hall kind of area where we can all meet and talk. So up here is the voice channels. You can see I'm logged into General Voice. And the way that it works is if you log in to General Voice, then we would be able to talk, just like we're on the phone, right? And, and there's, other oops, there's other channels, so I could connect to um, secondary voice if I want. So if you want to have a different conversation, and one room's full, or you, know, you don't want to talk over each other, there's multiple rooms, um, and that's how that works. Now, meanwhile, while you're in a voice channel, you can check out the normal just text channels, which work like a message board if you've ever used it. Um, so there's different categories. One of the reasons I like this, you know, oh, we just we're on Twitter. Why don't we just? Well, that's fine. Twitter's okay, but Twitter is this er area where you just sort of post to the world, and it's easy to miss stuff. What I like about um, the Discord is you've got categories like. Let's say you're not into, well, here's a good example. You're not into Comics Gate. I put all the Comics Gate stuff in its own area. So if you want to talk about Comics Gate, you can. You can go down here. And if you don't want to talk about it, you can literally just mute this channel. You know, you don't care about video games. You don't care about manga 
whatever, right? So everything's kind of in its own area. And you can mute channels that you don't care about. You can have channels that you do like, alert you, um, and so forth. Then there is other channels devoted to uh, like my, my, my YouTube channel. So I have the Ash on Comics section. Uh, Comic Quirks is a partner with me. He hasn't really built much of his stuff yet. He's been busy with school and stuff. But So I've added some channels for me. Um, one of the channels I have is like my recommended content. So, you know, I do my pull list videos like I am today. Uh, I'll eventually get around to it. And I feel like a pull list is often used by people as like recommendations. Like, oh, this is what Ash buys, so therefore he recommends it. That's not the case. And I was like, I want to have an area where these are comics that I will recommend. You can say the Ash on Comics stamp of approval. So here's an example. I have this channel for that. I have the Ash on Comics chat. So if you want to talk about my channel or if I want to post updates about my channel, I can go here. And then I have another one. It's like, what's Ash reading? Um, this, I decided, you know, I'm backlogged on books and I'm reading and I don't review everything that I read. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep a log of every time I read a book. I'm going to post it up here, give it a quick rating. So I read Justice League Dark 3, gave it a four star rating. And then I usually put, put a sentence or two about the book. Like, oh, cool freaking book. There you go. Here's how my ratings work. Um, you know, so I like I recently started getting into Venom, as you can see here, and I'm posting um, my thoughts on the books as I'm going through. Issue four was the last one I read. You can see Sergeant Bats, Eric Breen commented, comics were, you know, so it's a good place to talk about comics. It's a good place to meet up. And like I said, you have the option for voice. If you don't like talking voice, if you're like, oh, no, I don't, I don't really want to get on talking voice, you don't have to. There's no, there's no obligation. Um, if you don't have a mic, you don't have, you know, but you still can listen. If you, you can like log in. See, right now you can see right here my mic is muted. So no one would hear me. I have to unmute my mic. But if you just wanted to listen in, you know, and then we have uh, a voice, a chat, chat area. So like when everyone's talking and they want to just post stuff while in the chat, like while they're talking, uh, oftentimes we'll use it to post pictures, but people can type, you know, so you can follow along. Um, I really like the Discord. I think it's a great tool. It's great value. Um, we oftentimes will have uh, kind of voice talk sessions late at night. Uh, a few people log on, just shoot the shit. Um, it's really cool. So if you uh, are a fan of the channel or myself or any of the people involved here and you want to talk comics with us, if you think, hey, I would just feel free. Um, you got the information in the thing below. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, what that was all about. So let's get on to the video. Yeah, Ash, it's 13 minutes. I thought the video already started. Nope, it doesn't start until the burger's revealed. Oh, look at that. It got toppled in the car ride. Mm. Oh, where the hell's the lettuce? That's a no-no in and out. That's a no-no. In and out has this uh, concept they call every burger should smile. So when you when you look at your burger, it should be like this, and the lettuce should be out. You should be able to see everything, and it and it you know it's pinched kind of in the bottom in the bag, and, the, and the, this side opens up, and they call it smiling burger. The lettuce should not be buried back in there like that. That is someone dropped the ball, but that's only an aesthetic. I'm sure it tastes fine, which I'm gonna do right now so stay tuned don't go away don't you go away don't don't you do it ah all right that's a good burger uh thanks for waiting uh for those of you that are still here uh thanks for not tuning out look at this big list holy fucking camoli um th it's actually even bigger than this <laughs> Uh, this is, I am trying to pare this down. I do not want to be spending $200 a month on comics. Um, this is getting out of control. However, this is a good sign. Look at that Dr. Doom. I just had, look at that. I love that picture. Yes, Bath, I know the shading. Yes, yes, I know. Anyways, um, what was I saying? This is a good sign about comics, right? right? If you are in the 
quote unquote comics gate crowd. If you are the kind of person that's been disillusioned with modern comics, I feel you. I'm right there with you. However, if you are in the new comics gate crowd, what I call neo comics gate, um, I'm sorry, Ethan doesn't like that. He, it's not meant to be a derogatory thing. Um, it's not meant to be like neo conservative or neo, you know, like it's neo just means new. So I thought it sounded way better than phase two. <laughs> it's just, oh, like phase two doesn't mean anything to me. It's not phase two. It's a different kind of comics gate. It's a new comics gate. And it's about selling books. And most of the consumers, the fans of that, are about what I call black pills. They're about burning the industry down. They don't want Marvel Comics or DC Comics or anything. They just like, screw it all. It all sucks. It can all just be thrown into a fire. We're, we're done with it. Now, that's a fine opinion to have. I can't tell anyone what opinion to have. You can like comics, you can hate comics, whatever. That's an individual thing. But to promote this idea to others and try to persuade them to join your cause and feel the way you do, that I don't agree with. And so I'm going to be the mouthpiece against it. Like I, I, They have the right to say what they want to say, and I have the right to criticize what they say. The fact that I have $50 in freaking comics in one week, and it's actually more, is a testament to how good comics are. <laughs> like, there are more comics out than I, should just get to it, than I can afford to buy. Um, and even if I could afford to buy, I don't want to. I don't want to be walking home with a short box every night. You know, I wouldn't have a short box, but you know what I'm saying? I don't want all that space. I just want the best of the best. So this week, let's get on with it. Starting off with independence, because bats convinced me to do that. I used to do, do it backwards. Uh, but I'm going to start off with the indies. Ascender number one. Now, I already did a review on this through the magic of technology and uh, borrowing comics. Um, but I believe in supporting books that you like. I liked this book. I liked it more and more. Um, that after I read it, and so now it's in my hot little hands. I paid three ninety nine for it. This is the sender number one. You should be able to find it in your stores um, if you're interested. This is a really good book, and it's like a sci fi. It's a space fantasy. It's the same genre as Star Wars, essentially. So if you like that sort of thing, um, then a sender. Should be, you can see my review. <laughs> I'm sitting here going to go for it. So, moving on. So you can consider that kind of a back issue. Sender number two. Uh, you can pick these up, like I said, because Descender, the previous series, this is a sequel that happens 10 years after with new characters, um, did really well. And it's a really well-received book. Um, so stores, at least my store, or, seem to order heavy on this. I haven't read this one yet, but I'm going to. And Prodigy number six, the final book in this miniseries. Um, I like Mark Miller a lot, uh, really a lot. He is a very creative comic book writer. Um, he is a very strong idea man. There are, there, are, there are comics writers and there are comics idea men, and then there are some that can do both. Mark Miller's one of those ones that can do both. Scott Snyder can do both. Um, Jeff Johns, not quite as big of an idea guy, but does have some strong ideas. Um, some are just really good writers, you know, uh, and that's fine too. They could just tell a classic tale of adventures and good versus evil and heroic deeds. They don't really think outside the box. They don't come up with really bizarro ideas and concepts. And that's fine, too. Sometimes you just want that comfort food in a comic. You don't want to have some weird gourmet pizza. You know, like, you're just like, just, just give me some mashed potatoes and some, you know, meatloaf, you know. And that's fine, too. But the comic world needs people like this that come up with new ideas and things. Prodigy wasn't quite the out-of-the-box thing that I wanted, 
you know, that he's done in the past with uh, books like Nemesis, I thought was a, you know, or um, Kick-Ass. Um, God, I'm drawing a blank on a lot of his books right now, but you, you know. So anyways, I picked up Prodigy. It was a fun book. I've done reviews on it. You can see the reviews. I'm looking forward to seeing the wrap-up of the story. Um, these books read really easy. It reads like a movie. And obviously, Mark Millar's business now is trying to get his stuff made into movies. He's gotten the net sold it to Netflix. And this book reads like that, which to some people are going to be put off. I think it actually works really well because it's a breezy read. It's got fun, action, adventure. And if you put all the books together, 15 minutes a piece, you're reading them. It comes out to about 90 minutes of reading time. It's about like a movie. Uh, it's just really well paced. You're not going to get the deepest writing, but if you just want fun, if you want Zack style comics, that's that's where it's at. Next, probably one of the best comics on the shelf that people are not giving attention to. And what is it about that? What is it about comics these days? It, comics have become a lot like the movie industry, right? What do you mean, Ash? I mean, like, in the movie industry, the best movies are usually the ones that no one watches. They're usually these critical darling films. You know you know what I'm talking about. And for example, one of my favorite movies of all time, one of the best movies I've ever seen is Million Dollar Baby by Clint Eastwood. Utterly fucking ridiculous. It just one of the, it's just a best picture. Uh, it's just one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's phenomenal. Most people don't even know it exists. <laughs> you know, it didn't. It didn't break any box office, office records. Um, it didn't even show in most theaters. It had this limited release. A lot of movies are like that. And to normies, a lot of them, they look at, oh, that's just Oscar bait nonsense. Well, say what you will about the Oscars. There is quality filmmaking out there, and the Oscars do recognize it. And a lot of those films are amazing films. They're just not popcorn films. And it's okay to just say, I just want to pop. I just want to go watch Michael Bay have robots fight each other. Okay, that's fine. You can, I'm not going to knock it. But don't pretend like that uh, quality films are just nonsense because they're boring to you. Um, now, done with the indies. Um, Marvel. Silver Surfer Black. The main cover of this book is atrocious. I cannot stand. I was so glad. My comic store had two of these left, the Ron Lim cover. Uh, it's not still my favorite cover. There's like 24 freaking covers to this. Um, it's not my favorite cover, but my favorite cover is a stupid like one in a hundred chase variant nonsense bullshit Marvel preying on fans and retailers thing. That I, I even got in a discussion with a guy at the store about it, and he was like, yeah. Um, and we were just... <laughs> but... I did want to read it because Donny Cates is wowing me on Venom right now. He's like, he's a, here's another idea, man. We're talking about idea, man. Donny Cates, one of the modern guys. This guy is creative, comes up with new things. I love Silver Surfer. Um, I feel like he's only been done good outside of his books, not in his books. Every time they give him a series, it's like, meh. Stan Lee. Hey, Stan, you remember when you wrote that that? Silver Surfer miniseries with Mobius. That, my friend, was one of my favorite comics of all time. Thank you for making me a fan of Silver Surfer. Check that out. Um, so, Silver Surfer Black. Blah, 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 blah. Next. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Yeah, that's it. I just, I just sung that. That's the Spider-Man theme song from... What's that? The 60s cartoon? The original Spider-Man cartoon? You should look that up sometime if you haven't seen it. Uh, Spider-Man Life Story is what got me to break the seal and buy a Marvel comic. Um, Spider-Man Life Story is freaking fantastic. I did a review on all the issues so far. The last issue, number three, is the best so far. This movie, or movie, this comic will make you feel things. Um, it will, if you have a soul, that is, if you're not some jaded asshole, um, if you, it, it, Chip Zdarsky is knocking it out of the park. Um, so kudos 
to Chip. Mark Bagley is writing it. He's an old school 90s Marvel artist for Spider-Man. I have nothing but good things to say about this. Um, I'm excited. You should check this out if you like Spider-Man at all. Even if you're not a uh, typical Marvel fan, if, you, if you're like me, you're like, ah, oh, Marvel. This is one of those books that's, I think, it's one of the only books in the last 20 years that 20 years from now will look back and be like, what was great about 20 years ago? This. This is Supergirl. What the hell? Um, no, it is, I I picked this up. I thought this was the variant cover for Superman. So why? Because the last page of Superman uh, 11 ends with this. And so I, I picked up from the stack of Superman. I picked, I, I don't know what I, mistake I made. I was like, oh, okay, here's the full art cover. Didn't even think, wouldn't register. This is one reason I hate these. At least DC does put this down here, but I don't know what I was thinking. So, uh, yeah, it, it totally made sense. Bendis, cuck Superman. I mean, this totally... It, it, <laughs> oops, so my store, I called my store, and they're going to swap it out for me. So pretend that's Superman, number 12. And uh, speaking of books that I'm probably not going to keep buying anymore, yeah, Superman 12, I think, is going to be my last... Bendis is just just shitting the bed, and I don't. I keep. I I've, I've been doing this just for the channel, and I'm like, I'll just borrow it from someone uh, and and read the book, and I don't need to keep giving money. This is shit. I love Superman. I want to like. I want to like this. I didn't ever pick up Superman because I thought it was gonna be bad. If you go back and watch my old reviews of Man of Steel, I used to like talk Bendis up. Yeah, yeah. Nope, nope, nope. I, I have. Seen the errors of my way. I now have to eat crow. Everyone that told me I was wrong, you were right. I'm sorry. Um, Bendis is awful. Awful, awful, awful. Um, here, this is Red Hood and the Outlaws. Sorry, Red Hood Outlaw, number 35. Uh, this cover, I, I agonized in the store. I was like, should I just drop Red Hood? And then this, I just love this cover so much. Um, it's not doing it justice with this glare. But uh, just the reflection in the blood, just, oh. Red Hood is getting the freaking art, fantastic full art treatment um, on these covers. I don't know why Red Hood deserves any special privilege. So, next, Justice League Odyssey. It's not a book I'm reviewing, but I am reading and I'm posting it in the Discord channel, those books I'm reading. Notice it's a full art trade dress. I think I'm gonna drop this full art nonsense. Uh, this is one of the books I made. I love this cover. I just, the composition of it, it just everything about it, the layout, the colors, I just really like this cover. And this is, I like having the trade dress in the, look like a comic. This does not look like a comic. Oh my God, Stan. Oh, elder abuse. Jeez, Stan. That's all right. Have a drink. You'll be, you're all right, buddy. Um, Anyways, so the, the full art cover of this was just a picture of Jessica Cruz, like a big close-up of her face. and I'm kind of annoyed with her character anyway. I don't think, I don't really like her character. Um, so I was just like, but this, uh, anyways. So yeah, I'm probably going to trade over. If, if, if all the books were like this, I'd keep doing it. But I get too many where I just don't like the full arts. And the trade dress speaks to me and it shows like kind of what's going on in the comic. Speaking of full arts, here's another one that I'm having buyer's remorse for the covers. Um, this is the flashier one and I wish I was having the ones that said flashier one on it. Um, I don't necessarily hate the art, but they're not for me anyway. So, and then, geez, so many books. I don't even fit. Batman Who Laughs. I have to keep getting the trade dress on this, a seven issue mini series. I have to stick with it. Um, here's the deal. This is a $4.99 book. It has the nice, thick cardboard stock cover. Uh, I believe all the books, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone in the uh, viewers, uh, this is $4.99. The regular book is also $4.99. This summer, DC is doing Year of the Villain 
and they're three ninety nine books. What they're doing is they're putting the same cardstock cover, just like they did on Heroes in Crisis. They're doing on this for the variants, but they're charging a dollar more. So they're going to charge you a four ninety nine. Well, Ash, they're charging four ninety nine. But yes, but the regular version of this book is four ninety nine because it's a thicker. I'm pretty sure. That's why I want you guys to verify. I could probably go look it up on the internet right now, but um, that's bullshit. And that's another reason I'm going to switch off this trade dress. I, I'm tired of the. It's one, I hate I hate variants anyway, um, so I don't like this idea. Like I'm gonna buy two copies. I know, um, and I'm just I'm not now. I'm not gonna support this idea. Like oh, you're gonna charge a dollar extra for a different kind of cover. Let's see, you could suck it. Um, speaking of variants, Batman the Outsiders two. I really like this cover. Um, I did not like the cover for issue one. I got it anyway, and now I'm again have having buyer's remorse. I just wish I had the Batman and the Outsiders trade dress. Um, this should just be the cover. Just put Batman and the Outsiders, and here we go. Um, but it's not to be. Speaking of more Batman, because DC state, remember this stands for Detective Comics. So when you go, oh, there's too much Batman in Detective Comics. The company is named Batman. <laughs> so essentially. Um, Detective Comics 1005. This has been a really fun story. Tomasi is just solid comic books. You never are going to go wrong with Peter Tomasi. He may not always hit home runs, but he always gets on base. Uh, nice baseball reference there. Finally, last but certainly not least, should be the first best series, best ongoing mainstream series on the shelf. None other than Hawkman by... Robert Venditti. Will Conrad joins the artistic team, uh, starting with issue 13. Brian Hitch is going off, presumably, to do a Batman project. Um, good luck to him. Look at this cool ass cover. Some beast coming up. Just nice while Batman or Hawkman's flying away. If you are not reading Hawkman, what's wrong with you? Don't tell me I'm I love good comics. I wish there were more good comics, and then you're not reading this. This is better. I'm telling you, this is better than any Indiegogo comic you're going to buy. I'm not trying to harsh any Indiegogo comics. They're probably making fine comics. Um, some of those indie books I actually wish I were buying myself. I'm just not going to pay $37 for a comic book. Um, I will put money, though, that this is better, and it's only $3.99. I don't care about Hawkman. That's because you don't read Hawkman. I was the same way. I was the same way. I was like, oh, look at this stupid guy with this goofy hawk mask and his he-man crisscrossy thing on his chest and his mace and he flies around i was totally prejudiced read get this series you can get the tra uh, back issues cheap get the trade if you don't want to do that um, borrow it from a friend read this issues 1 through 12 are phenomenal venditti does not reinvent the character but he sort of redefines the character. He takes the histories that have existed, he doesn't obsolete them, he builds on top of them to explain them in a way that was not previously understood. So if you're a fan of Hawkman, you can read this and go, oh, all that stuff I already knew actually meant this. And if you're not a fan of Hawkman, you're like, I don't know a shit, but now I do. Now I understand where this guy comes from. The first seven issues are basically building up who he is. And then the last five issues are all freaking roller coaster ride, beating the bad guy, saving the day, heroism, uh, just awesome, awesome, awesome. You get to see every single Hawkman that ever was in this story, including the Hawkman of Krypton. Yep, there was a super Hawkman. Um, if you remember the badass freaking Kaiju Hawkman from Metal, he's in it. And it's not silly or stupid. It oh god, Vin is so good. I can't hype this book up enough. I probably hype it up too much, and then people read it and go, "What are you talking about, Ash? It wasn't that good. It was just fine." No, it's good. Here's my receipts. Uh, look at that, fifty-two dollars. Ugh. Oh no, there's no good comics anymore. Let the industry burn. Well, there's pretty good comics. They got they got me excited. Um, so. This has been a super long video. I try to keep this about a half an hour. I'm still looking for ideas on show, on, on doing the show, either show ideas 
what to talk about, what's interesting to you. Also, show name so it's not just the in and out pull list anymore. Um, you tell me what you think. Uh, I live off your feedback, I live off your views. And as always, I want to hear what you have to say, so please put it down below. And I will see you next time. Hashtag Reed Hawkman.